The first cancer diagnosis was with my uncle, my uncle Frank. Um, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer very late. He was 54 and only given a few months to live and um, that was pretty much it. He died a, a pretty quick death and in our family we pretty much just thought it was bad luck. You know, he was in his 50s, uh, it was mid-90s, you know, that's how we sort of rolled with it. And then the following year, my dad got cancer. He was the same age as my uh, dad's brother, he was 54, and he got advanced gastric cancer. So, and um, he survived, and that same year, later that year, my sister got cancer. And it was at that point that, um, that her oncologist suggested that we may have Lynch syndrome. So it was the first time we ever heard anything like this, and so we were kind of like, okay, well, what's the next step? And there wasn't really any mention of a genetic counselor or anything like that. The oncologist sort of just ordered this test between my uh, father and my sister. And, um, and all I know at the time, uh, looking at the results, that it came back inconclusive, a, a variant of unknown significance. Um, my dad and sister had different polymorphisms, which didn't really indicate that we had this disease or not. So it kind of just left us um, at the same place, like no answers, no direction more like we're still gonna get cancer. So then I started getting worried as I started finishing college that, you know, is there something really going on? Should I be getting colonoscopies? And I finally at 23, I decided, you know, I was like, well, it won't hurt to get a colonoscopy. That was the ninth cancer at that point when I uh, pursued genetic, genetic counseling and testing. And I was, I was really excited because I was um, I wanted to find the mutation for my family. I wanted to know if I had it because I didn't want to continue these colonoscopies if I didn't need to. And, um, and then the genetic counselor was like, well, we can't really use you <laughs> as a subject. So I was like, really? And she's like, no, we have to. It's, it's more informative if I uh, use someone who's had cancer. And, and so, of course, immediately I thought, you know, thought of my dad. Um, he had already survived cancer twice and there was and you know they needed his tumors to test for IHC and MSI and so they did that. I wasn't prepared for like how long it was going to take to find the mutation. It ended up taking nine months um, for um, them to find my dad's mutation because uh, they had to find the tumors from 12 years ago and they had to do the testing and um, you know they start off with the cheapest and easiest I think genetic test first and they couldn't find anything and I think finally they used a comprehensive analysis to find the mutation and we had a large deletion in the MSH2 gene and when we got the, when I got those results or my dad did you know I was finally re relieved that they found something um, conclusive that we did have it and that now that we could do something about it and so after that my genetic counselor called me and she's like, when do you want to get tested? Because we have, you know, have the mutation results and everything. And I was like, as soon as possible. And so uh, I think I came in a few, May 1st, I think. I remember those dates. May 1st, 2008, I got my blood drawn. And uh, I think I got the results within a couple weeks. The day of, uh, was it May 23rd, 2008, I got my results. And so she told me, that I tested positive, and I was like, great, <laughs> what to do now? And so I decided to take a proactive approach and, uh, you know, follow all my recommended screenings, um, uh, like the colonoscopy and the endometrial and ovarian screenings, and just, you know, watch my diet, because I wanted to be in control, and that's one thing that, I guess, just my personality, like, if I know there's something I can do, I want to do it and not blame myself in the end.